Now we continue with today's House Government Reform Committee hearing on campaign fundraising. Former Democratic Party fundraiser Charlie Tree testified at the hearing, chaired by Indiana Congressman Dan Burton. There's currently a little under five hours left. I'm going to take your five minutes now. Okay. The committee will be called to order. The chair recognizes Mr. Waxman for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it seems to me that we've got a lot of confusion over different terms of what a conspiracy is, whether money was taxable or not taxable, and uh, related kinds of questions that are legal in nature. Mr. Chairman, I know uh, I'd like to in the past, we've had a policy of not allowing the attorneys to respond, and on occasion we have let re attorneys respond. I wonder if we could let Mr. Tree's attorney address these questions that are legal in nature about conspiracy and what the money meant and get a statement from well, him. Well, the problem we have, Mr. Waxman, is if we get into that, we're going to be doing that for other uh, witnesses as well. I, 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 I have I, no I, objection to that. It seems to me the purpose of a hearing should be to clarify and, and cut through a lot of... Well, as long as this doesn't uh, set a precedent, if you want to ask uh, uh, Mr. Tree's attorney a question legal, on a legal issue, that's fine with me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weingarten, uh, there, a lot of members have gotten very frustrated this morning over whether... Mr. Tree was involved in a conspiracy where they had money that was taxable. Do you want to address those issues? Thank you, Mr. Waxman. Uh, there's no question but that as a matter of law, Mr. Shays is correct that when there's a conduit contribution situation, there is, as a legal matter, a conspiracy. There's no question also that Mr. Tree bridled at that concept because he believes many of the people he was dealing with, family members and friends, were completely unwitting. He feels bad that they were involved in this uh, enormous investigation, and in his heart, he does not believe that they were co-conspirators. So the issue with Mr. Shays and conspiracy was clearly a matter of nomenclature. Uh, we spent many hours with the staff yesterday in, an, in a good faith effort to clarify such issues, and uh, we have absolutely no intention of trying to move away from legal responsibility. In terms of the question of whether or not Mr. Tree believed he was engaged in legal or illegal activity at the time, uh, it, it, it should be obvious to the members of the committee, I'm sure it is, that this is a man with absolutely no legal sophistication and only the most rudimentary knowledge of the campaign laws. As Mr. Tree attempted to explain this morning, in 94 and 95, when he was receiving large sums from Mr. Wu, he believed that was partnership or corporate money that he was free to use as he saw fit, consistent with Mr. Wu's interests and did not believe he was violating the law. It's also true, obviously, that Mr. Tree pled guilty to a felony in U.S. District Court. An element of that felony is criminal intent. He has owned up to that criminal intent. In his statement to the committee, he admitted that he did wrong when he reimbursed um, a number of people. So there's no issue that when he made many of the reimbursements to friends and family members, he knew in his head that he was doing wrong and pled guilty, and that was obviously a, an element of the crime. Finally, in terms of the tax situation, from the time of this investigation, Mr. Tree has not filed an income tax return. Uh, primary reason, his records were not available to him for a number of years. We have advised the IRS of Mr. Tree's situation. There's no question that when all of this is over, uh, Mr. Tree's tax situation will come out in the wash with the IRS. But at least from 1996 forward, Mr. Tree has not been able to come to terms with the IRS. It's also true that Mr. Tree is not an accountant, has no sophisticated understanding of what income is and what income is not. And from his perspective, many of the contributions that were made were business expenses between Mr. Wu and Mr. Tree in pursuit of their investment enterprises in the United States. Thank you, Mr. Waxman. I, I appreciate those clarifications because I think when we, sitting up here, either because we have a legal background or we're dealing with laws, uh, words mean something to us that may not mean the same thing to Mr. Tree. So I appreciate this clarification. And Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for allowing uh, the attorney to respond because it seems to me that we cut through a lot of confusion, and I could see how someone like Mr. Shays could get very frustrated that he wasn't getting the, the answer that he wanted and, and because uh, Mr. Tree was thinking in different uh, terms. Exactly. Let, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Tree, some, some other questions that I have, because I still have some... Uh, well, I have some time, but not much. I, 
uh, I, I think I'll hold, well, let me, Mr. Tree, most of the money that you used to make campaign contributions came from Mr. Wu. And you used several hundred thousand dollars from Mr. Wu to make contributions yourself and then to reimburse other people to make these contributions. Most people hearing about these conduit contributions might wonder what was their purpose. And in fact, there, there's been a lot of speculation about what Mr. Wu wanted in return for his conduit contributions. It's been suggested that perhaps Mr. Wu wanted to influence U.S. policies or that he was an even an agent of the Chinese government. In your opinion, what did Mr. Wu want in return for the money he put up? Uh, Mr. Wu is a self-made uh, uh, businessman, and he depends on lots of people's support. So when he know me, and he think he can have a, help, my help to get him uh, uh, raise a fund to finish his project, and uh, that's all I know. He do. I've been with him for from since 1994. I still know, only thing I know, he was uh, doing the real estate business, uh, buy and sell. And he wanted me to help him to find, uh, locate the uh, uh, investor. Uh, he doesn't even speak English. I, I Did he, he wanted things from you. Did he want anything from the president? He doesn't even speak English. He cannot. Uh, Thank you. My time is up. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired. L l let me uh, take five minutes while we're waiting on Mr. Barr. The first thing is, uh, and I'm not going to get into an argument or discussion with uh, your counsel because we've already allowed him to talk. But uh, Mr. Tree, did you pay taxes on the money you got in 1994, 1995, 1996 from foreign sources? Uh, most time I was in other country. I, I don't really call. The point is that you said earlier that the reason that you hadn't paid your taxes on this money was because all of your records were taken, but they weren't taken in 1995 or 1994 or 1996. So for you to hide behind that veil saying, you know, the reason I didn't pay taxes on this money that was coming in from somebody else is because my records were taken. They weren't taken until 1997, as I recall. So the fact is you, 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 you avoided income taxes on this money that you say was money to you in, in, in years when you should have and could have paid taxes. Now, let me get into one other issue, and I'll let you respond in just a minute. We have here three pages, three full pages, single-spaced, of, 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 of contributions that you had laundered through other people. Uh, Celia Chow, Charlie Chang, Yu Chu, Tai Ann Lin, Terry Lin, William Lin, Chin Chin Hao, Zixi Khan, Jean Chang, uh, Ernie Green, uh, uh, Jim's Wood International, uh, Cassie Zahn, Manlin Fong, Joseph Landon, Yu Chu, Min Ch Ming Chen, Jing Wang, Charlie Chang, uh, Su, Su Lan, Yan, Lan Yu, uh, 12,500. All of these people, you were giving them money and telling them to give it to the DNC or to the President's Re-Election Committee under their names. You deliberately were giving them money saying, okay, here's money, you give it to the DNC under your name. Why were you doing that with all these different people if you didn't think uh, there was, uh, th th that you had something that, that, that it was something that shouldn't be done. You must have known this was illegal, otherwise you would have just given it in your name. Why didn't you give it in your name instead of running it through all these people? So you want me to qu answer this question? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, in the, uh, 1994, I wrote a check. I wrote a many, many check. <clears throat> 1995 and 1996, I started asking people for uh, help me to write a check. I give reimburse the uh, the money. Only thing I was thinking, you know, in that time, I didn't have enough income in my bank account. So every time, because I was in Washington D.C. or in Asia, my my uh, the company, my own company, is that house is in Little Rock. And I hardly go back there. So you're very, uh, very uncomfortable for myself. I already explained. Every time I go into the par uh, party event, 
only few Asian people. Every time I was the only one, everybody know. So more and more uncomfortable say, you know, if I, I, I keep a roll this check and I didn't have a, because I have been bounced once, one check for $50,000, uh, 1995. 1995, that check was bounced for 50000 So I was very uncomfortable if this thing happened because I didn't have money coming in. So I start thinking, and uh, I think the star was, uh, 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 I think it's a silly chair was, uh, we went to the uh, party on Carbon, and she want to have a chance to take a picture. So I say, okay, you write a check, I give the money, and she didn't think anything, so she wrote a check. That's what I feel, and uh, every time I think, DNC doesn't match the people with whoever gave the check. M Mr. Tree. Yeah. Here's two hundred and fifty-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and here's seven hundred and eighty-two thousand five hundred dollars that you ran through, in large part, other people to give to the DNC and to other candidates. You you were taking money, giving it to them, to the tune of up to a million dollars, and having that money run through their accounts into the DNC. I don't, uh, I have to see the record because- Well, I, I have I the records believe. right here. Yeah, this, I know. This is it. And, 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 and uh, you know. I don't believe uh, that much money. Well, <laughs> we have the records. And, yes. Uh, you can give him a copy of this. The, but, the, but, the, but the point is, uh, Ernie Green on February 6, 1996, $50,000 to the DNC, Ernie Green alone. Now, we can't go into Ernie Green, I'm sorry. But that's one of the things we agreed to with the, uh, with the Justice Department, that and Mark Middleton, so I won't go into that. But, but, but the fact of the matter is, it, 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 it stretches credulity for you to say that you didn't know that there was an illegal act taking place and that you didn't know that this was something that you shouldn't be doing when you did this. It just doesn't make sense. Mr. Barr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I share uh, your confusion and uh, the confusion uh, uh, stated by Mr. Shays a little bit earlier with regard to uh, what Mr. Tree knew and when did he know it. Uh, you did, Mr. Tree, uh, enter a plea uh, in federal court in Little Rock on May 21st of 1999. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And at the time you entered that plea and appeared before the judge, you were placed under oath. Is that correct? I'm sorry, I didn't get the... Were you under oath when you entered your plea? Oath. Uh-huh. Were you under oath when you entered yes. your plea? Yes. That means you swore to tell the truth. Is that correct? Correct. And you are under oath today, are you not? I am. You have sworn to tell the truth today, correct? Yes. Okay. At the time you entered your plea in court on May 21st of last year, you testified under oath that you knowingly and willfully caused another person to make materially false, fictitious, and fraudulent statements and representations to the treasurer for the DNC and that you caused that person to submit a false report to the FEC. Correct? Correct. Okay. That means that you testified in court under oath that you knew what you were doing was against the law, correct? I'm, I'm not trying to play word games with you. I think you're trying to play word games with us. All I'm trying to get at is you knew that you were breaking the law and that's why you entered the plea, correct? I, I plead guilty because my counsel advised me to plead guilty. I didn't read the statement. Did your counsel advise you to plead guilty and state under... Un we pay attention yeah, I, here. I knew here, I would do something wrong in that time. Okay, you testified under oath at the time you entered your plea that you knowingly and willfully broke the law. Is that correct? 
you knew that you had broken the law. Correct? plead guilty in the court, which I did something wrong. Correct. Correct. But I didn't know the campaign finance law. Are you recanting today your testimony under oath on May 21st of 1999 that you did know that you were violating the law and that you willfully violated the law because that was your testimony under oath on May 21st of 1999. Are you recanting that testimony today? No. Okay, so you did know that you violated the law and that you willfully violated the law pursuant to the terms of your plea, is that correct? I plead guilty not because I know the campaign finance law, but I know I do something wrong. I, I, I really don't understand why we're going around and around uh, on this. Uh, Can I address my, my uh, feeling about the, what's happened? Well, you'll have plenty of opportunity to provide us your opinion. What, all I'm trying to get at is you knew that you violated the law and you willfully violated the law. Is that correct? Yes or no? Now, if your lawyers tell you to say no, that's fine. We know where we stand. That's all I'm asking. Did you knowingly and willfully violate the law? I knowingly I do something wrong, but I don't know the law. Well, then are you recanting your plea? Because in your plea, you said under oath that you knowingly and willfully violated the law. The court didn't ask you if you knowingly did something wrong. That isn't what they asked you. Your lawyer was present with you in court on May 21st. Is that correct? My lawyer was... Uh in the court, correct? They're with you? Yes. And the court gave you full opportunity to explain or ask any questions about your plea, did they not? Yes. Okay. They tell me I, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, following the, I, uh, I met, Well, uh, we have to go vote. Uh, yeah, we, have a vote uh, we can continue this when we get back, we'll, Mr. We'll Chairman. We'll continue when we come back. We stand in recess uh, until the vote's uh, concluded. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. to uh, call this hearing to order and, and uh, 
Uh, Mr. Barr, had you finished your five minutes? Or was the clock ran out? I think it had. I think we'd, uh, we had concluded that, uh, that five minute round. Uh, I defer to counsel. Had we finished that five minute so, clock? Um, then we'll. Uh, Mr. Burton is here, so if he has questions, I guess, do we go with you or Mr. Waxman? Did you have questions? Well, I will, but I'll, I think Mr. Waxman is before. Are you ready? Okay. Mr. Waxman. Thank you. Uh, um, Mr. Tree, uh, I, I was asking earlier about Mr. Wu, and you said Mr. Wu had a lot of money, and he was willing to give money to the president. Um, and I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand why Mr. Wu would give so much money to the president's campaign. Uh, was he interested in taking? Was he interested in influencing the president, or was he interested in taking photos with the president? What was his reason for wanting to give so much money? He's interested in to <clears throat> knowing more people from the event, and then maybe take a picture. Of course, take a picture is the most honest thing for him. That was an important thing for him. Yes. Why was it important? He feel good. He, he feel good. He feel good taking a picture with the president? Yes. Would it help him in, uh, in his boy, business? Uh, help him business-wise, too. How, how, how would it help him? In Asia, if you put a, a, a picture in your office wall with the president of the United States, it's a very, very good thing. Did Mr. Wu have any contacts with the Chinese government, or do you have a relationship that's with the Chinese not government? As, that's as I know. Not that you know. Do you have any reason to think that he was an agent of the Chinese government? No. Um, you were asked about Tommy Winata, the Indonesian billionaire who provided you with a large sum of money, some of which were used for campaign contributions. Why did Mr. Winata give you the money? We're friends. Uh, did he want to take a photo with the president? Did he want to meet the president? He met a president before. I think he is in Seattle, APAC. I, knew, I think he was a delegation f uh, from Indonesia, but I'm not sure. I saw the picture. Did he have any interest in trying to influence United States policy? I don't believe so. And um, how was it he could give such a large sum of money? To who? To me? Yeah. I think I just asked him. He likes me a lot. That's why he won't offer me the, the job. When he gave you money, was he giving on behalf of the Chinese government? Not at all. Do you have any reason to think he might have been a Chinese spy or agent? He, don't even, he hardly go to China. He doesn't believe he have a... Uh, because he speaks Indonesian, he speaks Chinese, but uh, he thinks uh, Indonesia is his base. The chairman earlier, he, when he questioned you, he said you fled the country. Did you flee the country? I think uh, I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm entitled to go anywhere I wanted to because uh, it's never been charged. It, today, I know. I have the, in that time, I don't know, I have the face of, what, a fifth amendment? <clears throat> Even, I mean, in this country, I will use the fifth amendment. But in that time, I just go, I want, I have a hard time because the reporter keep calling me, they was in my house and uh, bothers me. And I think, you know, in this country, even now, I hardly even find a job. So I think, you know, I have, I, I will be have a hard time because I don't know why my, my, my name always in the newspaper. So I think I, that's why I go to Asia, where I still have some chance to do business. Let me ask you about the president's legal defense fund, not the campaign, but the legal defense fund. Yes. Because it was reported that you had played a role in raising over $500,000 for that. Uh, and it turned out that these, uh, this money was, was uh, from other people. Did anyone at the White House ask you to raise money for the legal defense fund? No, they didn't ask me, but I just knew. You knew? I knew there's a, a, a because in the beginning, when I, I think I talked to Mark, and, uh, you know, because I know he, I knew he was doing the uh, President Library in Little Rock, raising the fund. And I find out there's a, a, another uh, called 
uh, President Legal Defense Fund. And as I know, he they sure he owe in that time I think is a two million dollar. That's how I know. So you knew they they wanted to raise money, but they didn't ask you to, to mm. raise or give money. Maybe Mark asked me say if you have a chance, you know, help raise this money. Did anyone at the Democratic National Committee ask you to raise money for this legal defense fund? No. Did any uh, friend or associate of the president or the first lady ask you to raise money for the no. legal defense fund? And as I understand it, the contributions came from a tai Taiwanese religious group. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Gentleman's time has expired. Can I just ask two questions and I'll be through? And I'll let you have some. Mr. Waxman. Just to finish these, these questions, and then I'm going to let the Republicans go with several rounds. In your statement, the written statement, you said that the leader of the group, this religious group, uh, a Vietnamese woman named Suma Hai wanted to help the president because she thought he was a good man who had been helpful to Vietnamese immigrants while he was the governor of Arkansas. As far as you know, was she trying to change U.S. policy? Not at all. Uh, let me talk about this one because uh, Suma Ching Hai, uh, I recall, she said, uh, we, I remember in Arkansas enforcement is how call, uh, refugee camp called Fort Chaffee. And there's uh, many of the Vietnamese people was staying there and uh, many of them even work, work for me. So I know she telling the truth. I mean, she, the way she tell me she like, because uh, you, if you can check the record, she even went to Hong Kong to tell the Hong Kong government don't send the refugee back to Vietnam. So I know she was uh, love their, uh, her own people. That's how she wanted me to say, you know. If Let me ask you the, my last question. Yeah. Were you trying to help the president because you wanted to influence the United States policy? No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To listen to you, Mr. Tree, when you went to China, you're saying you just went because you wanted to go over there and you wanted to avoid the press. The fact of the matter is you had to know that this committee the Senate committee, the Justice Department, the FBI, all wanted to talk to you about the illegal campaign contributions. We were talking to a whole host of other people and subpoenaing people to come before these committees in the Senate and the House. For you to say that you just left because of press accounts doesn't make sense. And even if that were the case, you went over there and you stayed over there after you knew that this committee, the Senate committee, and the Justice Department, and the FBI wanted to talk to you. You didn't come back. And there were press accounts where you made some comments about staying over there. And so, you know, I think it's hard for anybody who's, who knows the facts to believe that you just went over there simply because you wanted to get away from the media. The fact is you were staying over there because you didn't want to be questioned by these committees and the Justice Department and the FBI because you're afraid that she might be uh, indicted or convicted. Isn't that the case? Uh, let me address this one. When they indict me, when the Justice Department, DOJ uh, indict me, I come back right away. If I want to run away, but you know, on the question, I know there's a Fifth Amendment. If I use the Fifth Amendment, even if I'm in Washington, D.C., if I know you want to talk to me, if I use the Fifth Amendment, uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter I'm in here or not, but I'm, I'm free to travel. Is that right? American citizens' right? You know, when, when Tom Brokaw interviewed you, when you were over there, you said, I could stay here for 10 years and they would never find me. And you knew that people wanted to talk to you and you did stay there. You did finally come back. That's good. You came back after you were indicted, that's good. But for you to, 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 to make, to leave the impression that you weren't staying away because you were concerned, just stretch, stretches. If I want to uh, stay uh, there, I, I could have stayed there. Is that, I, I, I make a statement was right, correct. If I want to stay there, I can stay 10 years. But I came back when you, okay. when okay, the well, DOJ indicted me. Okay, well let's, 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 let's talk about these people that were giving you money. 
You said that you didn't know Ning Lap Singh, better known as Mr. Wu, was connected to the Chinese Communist government. Uh, he was. He was a member of the CPPCC, the Chinese People Political Consultative Congress, which is a communist Chinese political organization. He was connected to that. You were intimately involved with him. And I cannot for the life of me figure out how you would not know of his involvement, especially in view of the fact that he was giving you large amounts of money for business purposes or for conduit contributions to the president and the DNC. You know, it doesn't make sense. He had business deals with the Chinese state-owned companies like Citic. Yes. You must have known that. He told the FBI that he believed Wu, uh, you told the FBI that you, you believed Wu knew people in, in Chinese intelligence. So when you told the FBI that, you must have known he had connections with the Chinese government. And today you're saying, well, you didn't know that. But you told the FBI okay, that you believed. The question, the, uh, what they is is uh, a high uh, government official. I don't know what's it mean. He's, he uh, okay, is let, let, uh, uh, in Chinese called, he is uh, called uh, uh, the, the name you mentioned. But that one is just some, uh, you know, you, you have to understand what's the Chinese people. Also, every, uh, not every, 90 some percent uh, uh, business uh, stay on. That's yes, no, I know. Yeah, that's a no, no, no question. So every, everybody he do business. Even when I do business, I have to do with the Chinese government. Lu, Lu yeah. Chao Ying, Lu Chao Ying, who funneled three hundred thousand dollars from General G into through Johnny Chung. You knew Lu Chao Ying. You knew she was an executive for the uh, uh, aerospace industry. You also knew her father was the head of the People's Liberation Army and a high government official. Yes. And you were dealing I mean, with her. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, what's the relate with uh, Liu Chaoyi? Well, but you, I, you... I just met her through my friend. Tommy Wianata. Yes. He had business deals with several Chinese companies. He knew Liu Chaoying, and he was involved with Liu Chaoying in, 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 in a business venture. You knew about that. Uh, he had connections to Chinese intelligence. You say you didn't know about that. Uh, I, I, these people were giving you large sums of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You were intimately involved with them, and you're saying you had no idea about this. Oh, I didn't say I didn't know about this. Well, tell I me. knew her. Okay, that was in 1997 after the campaign finance broke off. I well, went well, to. Well, well, Tommy yeah. Wianata and, and Lim Ning Lap Singh were before 1996. Yes, but I don't know Tommy Wianata do any business with a, a, Chinese, a Chinese company. But that was Liu Chaoying was, uh, let me say this, we are just, uh, everybody do business, uh, doesn't have to do something uh, like, uh, I have to worry about this kind of thing. Everybody is, uh, is uh, stay own okay, business. Well, let, let me and put it, it, it wasn't me to do business. Let, let me put it a different way. Okay. Ning Lab Singh, Mr. Wu, was involved and was a part of a, an arm of the communist Chinese government. He was giving you a lot of money. He was doing business with state-owned companies like Citic, which is directly connected to the leadership of the Chinese communist government. They were giving you large sums of money that was funneled into the president's re-election committee and you're saying you had no knowledge about that? It was just that, a co what it was I just, believe it, his it was, money. It was, it was just a coincidence that you were getting the money and giving it to the DNC and the president's re-election. But committee. I believe that's his own money. Who do who, who he do business is he make money off there? I don't know. Mm. He have so many business. So you just all these people that were connected to the Chinese government, you didn't know. He, whether or not well, he, they were do, he owe he business, 99% was doing with the Chinese people. And he, I think he entitled to do business with the Chinese people. And, to, and Tommy Wianata, who had connections to Chinese intelligence, wanted to have a private meeting with the president. He turned down sitting next to the president at a dinner because he wanted to have a private meeting with the president. And you didn't, under, you didn't see any, any concern about that. Didn't work out. That's what I know. Yeah. Mr. Barr. Excuse me. Mr. Shays. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to yield to Mr. Barr. Uh, I thank uh, the chairman. I thank the gentleman from Connecticut. 
Uh, Excuse Mr. me, can Mr. I answer your question before? Well, you don't know what my question is yet. No, I mean the, the one before. Well, let me, uh, let me get at it this way. I think there probably is more than one way to, to skin a cat here. Uh, do you reaffirm your testimony given in court on May 21st of last year at the time you entered your plea in all their particulars? Do you reaffirm all of that testimony here today under oath? At the time. Yes I'm or no? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do you know a lady named Lin Ro Ching? Yes. Okay. And Ms. Lin uh, was a senior official with the rank of senior colonel in the General Logistics Department of the People's Liberation Army. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, you've provided previous statements to that effect. Yes. Is that correct? And at the time you dealt with her, you knew that she was a senior officer in a, the logistics department of the PLA. That's correct also, isn't it? Correct. Okay. And there's no doubt about it. I mean, she is, was, that is, an, an official in the PLA. Could the gentleman just yield a second? I, you said incorrect. Did you mean correct to the... I want to... Uh, correct. You, uh, he, in the record, says incorrect, so I want to just make sure. But he said I, correct. I, I he thought he said correct, correct but uh, we certainly don't want to leave anything to a misinterpretation. Uh, she, she, she was an official with the PLA, and you knew she was an official with the PLA. That's correct also, isn't it? I think so, yes. Okay. In November of 1994, you invited uh, Ms. Lynn, Colonel Lynn, uh, to visit the United States, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and specifically, uh, you sent her a letter, Exhibit 52, please, on November 7th of 1994, uh, inviting her to visit Arkansas, is that correct? Can I look at the record? Yes. Okay. And there is a notation at the bottom of that letter, Exhibit 52, uh, in Chinese handwriting that says, in translation, this is the second stage. Is that correct? No, second part. Second part? Yes. The second part of what? Uh, with the, I don't know the first part. Let me look at it. You can translate a second stage or a second part. Okay. The translation I have is this is the second stage. So that's a should that be would be a correct part. translation, right? Yes. This okay. should be the second part, if I understand. So it certainly would be a correct assumption that there was that this was a continuing relationship. There were was prior there were previous actions between the two of you. No, you have I think you have to read the whole thing. I, I didn't pay attention because this is not my, uh, I didn't write this letter, I think it's, uh, I believe maybe it's uh, Jennifer Russell. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's go back to basics. Is that your signature on the bottom of Exhibit 52? Uh, I can't tell. I think uh, probably uh, DM Apili, my secretary, she have a power attorney to sign my letter. Okay, are you disavowing the signature on that letter? I cannot, it uh, uh, doesn't look like my, myself. Okay, is it a forgery? No, I, she have my power attorney to sign my... Uh, okay, so th this is either your signature or a signature placed on this letter with your express permission? Mm, yes, yes. Okay, so the notation at the bottom, which translates to this is the second stage... Or second part. Or the second part, uh, that we could legitimately conclude that there was a first part or a first stage. Mm. You, if you look on top on the right-hand corner, uh, this is, uh, that's my secretary in Beijing. I believe he, well, this, uh, let me see, 
the words. I didn't. Uh, well, let's thinking. move on. Okay. Uh, we've established what it says, and I think okay. uh, that the reasonable conclusion. There was further communication between yourself and the Democrat National Party with regard to Colonel Lynn. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay. And you sought to have her join an organization which is a part of the Democrat National Committee called the Business Leadership Forum, or BLF. That's correct, isn't correct. it? Correct. Pardon? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and, for example, Exhibit 56, which consists of a fax cover sheet from the Democrat National Committee Finance Division mm -hmm. to your assistant, and which includes a letter signed by the deputy director of the Business Leadership Forum, mm -hmm. uh, clearly indicates that this was a letter sent to Colonel Lin in Beijing with regard to her interest in joining the Democrat National Committee Business Leadership Forum. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired. But okay, now yield to, no, we yield to Mr. Barr now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is also a letter dated November 16th of 1994, which is exhibit number 58, which is a two-page letter. And insofar as there may be some confusion, would you tell us if that is your signature on that letter? No. That is not your signature. Should it be Dear Mapili's signature? I'm uh, sorry? She uh, signed for me, yes. You're, so it is, it is either your signature or a signature placed on that letter with your express permission? Yes. Okay. And that letter then was followed by another letter with a very poor copy found at exhibit number 59 which is a letter from you to David Mercer mm -hmm. uh, stating that a check in the amount of $10,000 is included on behalf of Colonel Lynn for her to join the BLF. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Stating also in that letter that Colonel Lynn is a, quote, avid supporter of President Clinton, close quote. Correct. And is that a accurate characterization of Colonel Lynn's view of Mr. Clinton? Because I like him, so she believes what I say. Okay, so it is an accurate representation of her mm, feelings yes. towards Mr. Clinton. Yes. Okay. Uh, Colonel Lynn uh, has since been executed by the... I don't know that she has been. She's been sentenced. That's only I read on the news. Newspaper. Okay, and what newspaper was that? I think it's a Chinese newspaper. Okay, and what did that story indicate? That she had been sentenced to death? I didn't pay real attention, but because of the name catch me, because, I, yeah, I think it's a sentence to a death sentence. That's all I know. Okay. Uh, do you know whether or not she has, in fact, been executed? I don't know. Okay. Do you presume that she has? I don't have no comment on this one. I don't know. Okay. Isn't it, uh, isn't it standard procedure in mainland China that when an article like that appears in the official newspaper that it is a fact that the person has been executed normally? I don't know. You're not familiar I can, with that? I cannot tell you this, this on this kind of thing. Okay. You have traveled extensively in mainland China, have you yes. not? Yes. You are familiar with the general way the government there operates, are you not? I'm not. You're not. Okay. Uh, are you, is it your testimony that you would have this committee believe that you are completely ignorant of the government in China? What, what does this mean? Is it your testimony to this committee, and would you have this committee believe that you are completely ignorant of how the government in China operates? Not on the death penalty. I never have faced anybody who have a death penalty. Well, I, I have no way of knowing. My question isn't whether or not you face the death penalty. I presume that if you had, but you wouldn't be But your question here. was the death penalty. No, I just generally, you, you seem to be trying to indicate to us that you have no idea how the government in China operates. 
I do, I do, okay. but not on the death penalty, because you was asking the death okay, penalty, is, is she executed or not. You would certainly agree, I presume, that when the government of China, mainland China, that is, makes an official statement or causes a particular fact to appear in the state newspaper, that it probably reflects what has actually happened. The question you're asking me, I don't have a no answer, because I don't run the government. Especially on this kind of death penalty thing, I don't have a no idea. She's okay. still alive or not. But, but you, you, you did see uh, an article in the official paper of China that no, Colonel... No, 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 it's in U.S. The pe newspaper is in U.S., a Chinese newspaper, in the corner. Okay, uh, that's not the communist Chinese government no, no, newspaper. No, 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 no. Okay, in the newspaper in the U.S. Yes. Okay. That's what I believe. So therefore, we can presume that it was accurate. What's that? I'm at nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying, if it appeared in the newspaper in this country, can we presume that it was accurate? No. I don't know. Um, I, I don't read the news. But we, we, we agree on that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do have another line of questioning, but rather than begin that at this point, what I'd prefer to do is, is yield back, and then uh, uh, after uh, we, re or we do, have a, do we have a vote on the floor? We do, and uh, that'll be the last vote of the day, and we won't be interrupted any further. So why don't we stand in recess uh, for about 10 minutes, Mr. and you can come right Mr. back. Mr. And then if you choose, Mr. Stoddard, you can yield to... Uh, do you, you want... You, Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to do is yield my time to the discretion of the chair so I can do a five-minute on the floor, and then I'll come back. But, it, but That'll be fine, then. Uh, uh, you're yielding that time to Mr. Barr? Yes. Okay, the then when we come back, Mr. Barr, you'll have five minutes, and we'll, con we'll continue. We stand in recess to follow the gavel. I would want to go through some of the information because it seems to me very straightforward. I don't quite understand um, why you would want to insist that you didn't know it was illegal to do all of this conduit funding. And I don't see kind of what you gain, so it's a real mystery to me because you would have to be... Uh, um, the amount of money that you have filtered into both the Democrat National Committee, over 600000 and to the President's Legal Expense Trust, over 640000 we're talking about $1.2 and you have so many people's names on money that wasn't their money. And it just would seem illogical to me. In fact, I will say to you, I mean no disrespect, but I just question your integrity on that issue. I don't think you're telling me the truth. Now, um, uh, and it fascinates me why. I want to understand why this is, why you would want to insist this, because it's not logical to me. But let me ask you this so there's no doubt. You have not reported over $300,000 of income. You do know that's illegal. Can you uh, separate the Yeah, let's do issue. it. Let's, let's yeah, do it step so, by step. Yeah, the 120000 that you said was wired to you um, from R Rinalda? Renata? Renata, uh, who owns Satel Indo. That's Satel one of his Indo, businesses. Right. I know he has a conglomerate, uh, but uh, that's one of his businesses. Correct. Uh, so Tommy Renata. Correct. Um, you got 120000 that was wired to you by him. Yeah, one time is 70 and one time is yeah, two, two. It, it added two up to 120. There were two. Oh, correct. Now, that was sent to you, and you did not report it as income. Uh, correct. And that's illegal, correct? Because this was income to you. Mm, yes, it's income. So, he, he so you do money. know that you, you know, know, you keep giving me money if... You do know that you're, you broke the law. I mean, you're an American citizen, and you're supposed to report income. Uh, I just said you uh, probably you wasn't here last time. <clears throat> 
in since seventy six, this uh, campaign finance uh, law broke off. 70, 90, 97, 1998, 1999, I didn't file the income tax return, which we uh, we've been we talked to the uh, we talked to the R R S. I w after this uh, investigation finish, I will do the tax in income tax return. But you you were required to file an income tax. Uh, because I don't have no more paperwork. Everything was being searched by the FBI. Is it your testimony before us that the 120,000 total amount, and is that the total amount that he wired you? Was there more? Why is, uh, why is 1996, why is 1995? I haven't seen the document. But it's a two separate wire. So is it your testimony that you don't legally have to file an income tax statement with all this income? I didn't say that. I mean, I, I'm just confused. I need to understand where your mind is, and then I can figure out how I can evaluate the responses to your questions. I mean, this is a gigantic mystery to me. You get income as an American citizen. You have to pay taxes on it. And you're giving me some excuse as to why you didn't file your income tax? What is this excuse? I think that's the fact. What is the fact? I, all my paper was uh, not there. When, when, when was the paperwork taken? Early, early of 19, all late in 1996. No, no, when did they take your paperwork? I don't know. I wasn't in Don't this say country. you don't know. You, you can't tell me one thing and then another. What year did you, did the, who took your paperwork? FBI, 1997. Okay, 1997. Did you file your 1995 tax returns? I don't recall. I wasn't in the country. Most time I wasn't in the country. I give myself another five minutes. I think my lawyer told me the tax return has been filed. Let's go through. Uh, the record has been produced. Did you file your tax return in 1990? 1990? I believe so. Did you do it in 1991? I believe so. 19. I you believe so? Why? It's it's really a yes or no. I mean, most Americans know if they filed their income tax. I don't. I don't remember. You don't remember, so it's possible you didn't. I think this is record. I, I Pardon cannot, me. There should be record. I don't know right now. Did you file your tax return in 1992? Yes, I do. I I have accountant. Can I talk to my accountant? Subpoenas. My tax return have to be provided to the investigator. So, I just want to know if you filed them. Did you file your tax return in 1994? Your lawyer thinks so. My lawyer thinks so. Did you file your tax return in 1995? I have an accountant. I believe uh, she will do her job. But right Say now, something to you. That's not a good enough answer. And if your lawyer is telling you to give those answers, it's just ridiculous. The bottom line is you're a witness before us. You've been given immunity, and you are very uncooperative. And I don't want to, I didn't, I had no interest whatsoever in getting into income tax. But you are, you are so cavalier about, well, I didn't know about the finance laws. And then we learn you didn't report money as income that any other American citizen would have to report. And so now I'm going this down this road. And I'm going to stay down this road until I get some answers from you. Okay. And, and it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. If you're trying to be cute, it's not going to be to your advantage. So I want to know if you filed your income tax in 1995. I have to give the answer as my lawyer thinks so. And they produced to the Your investigator. Your lawyer thinks so? 
Why would you have time? Why would you have a heart? Every American has to do it every year. So if you asked me, I would say yes, because I had to do it every year. That's the law. I know it's the law. I've been filed a tax since 1976. Pardon me? I, I know it's the law. I've been filed the income tax since 1976. No, but, but that's what I want to know. You said you've been filing the, the, your, your income tax since 1976. And then yes. when I ask you if you've done it, you say you don't know or ask your accountant or attorney. Yeah, because she's the one doing the job. No, but I, you're the I, one who has to, you know, you, you can't get away with that. Okay. You can't get away with blaming someone else for your responsibility. And it has nothing to do with, with whether you are a naturalized citizen or not. You are an American citizen. And the question is, did you file an income tax? And now you're telling me, attorney, you do not know yourself if you filed an income tax? I really don't know. I really I, do why? not know. Why don't you know? Because my wife is the one in charge of all the account. And so it's possible you didn't file your income tax in 1994? I cannot tell you. Right Is it now. possible? So you don't know, one way or the other. That's your testimony? Oh, by the way, I, I recently received the state income tax call me. I, I owe 1994 tax, uh, 2800 I, I saw, don't know why that's relevant. I don't know why that's, that's the state. I want to know, as an American citizen, whether you were filing your... I don't even know. That one I didn't pay, so I went you to... You filed your income tax statement in 1996. 1996. Yeah. No, you informed the IRS. Did you work? No, I informed the IRS. The, uh, I mean, the lawyer Reese. informed the IRS. Have you informed the IRS that you may not have filed income tax statements in 1992, 93, 94, and, and 95? Why would you, did you? Have you told them that you may not have done it in those years? I never talked to the IRS. No, you just told me you told the IRS and they did lawyer. Did your lawyers tell, why did they tell you, t I, I'm, let me slow down. They represent down. me. No, let me slow down, let me slow yeah. down. I want to know, why did you tell them that you didn't file an income tax statement in 96, 97, and 98, and 99 as well? Yes. Those years? Yes. In six, seven, eight, and nine? Yes. Okay. And tell me uh, why, you, uh, uh, why you told them that you didn't file an income tax statement then when you may not have also filed an income sta tax statement earlier. Why did you choose 96 on? I do not remember I filed tax in 1991, 1992, 1993, or 1994. I cannot give you this well, answer. My time is run out. Mr. Barr, you have the floor. Uh, I, I yield to the gentleman from Connecticut. Thank you. Well, what I'm trying to understand is why you would have told the IRS in 96 on that you haven't filed income tax when you may not have filed it earlier. And I just need you to explain, why did you pick 96 on to tell them? Why didn't you pick earlier? From my understanding, if you don't file the uh, tax, they will call you or something. I didn't receive any call, so I think I, and in that time, I have accountant. So best my knowledge will be my wife and my accountant doing the whole thing. I know you're not a stupid man, sir, and I know that you know that every American has to pay income tax. I know, and I know, know every American know has to pay. you know it's not an excuse that someone didn't send you a form. That, that just doesn't wash. Now. Why didn't you file your income tax statement in 1996, the one that you're willing to say you do know that you didn't file? Why didn't you file in 1996? Because the investigation, I don't have no more paper. Okay. All the paper is gone. When did they give me the exact time they took your papers? I don't know. I don't no, have no, 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 no. That's, yeah. give, me, give me the date when they came and took your papers. You can't keep saying I don't know. I was out of the country. I don't know when they searched my apartment and my house. Okay. Do you know what year it was? 1997. Wh uh, when did you leave the country? 1996, end of 1996. You left in 96 and you were gone. And where did you flee to? I never flee. Yes, you did. You left the country. You fleed. I left the country. I'm an American citizen. I'm entitled to go anywhere in the world I want. No, you can't. No, right. And an American citizen also has to file your income tax statement. Yes. 
No. And you can't say, well, I wasn't sent a form. You're an Ameri you can't claim you're an American citizen and have knowledge of some things and not on others when they're so all basic. Now, when you fled the country, where did you go? Asia. Where in Asia? Don't be cute. Where did you go in Asia? China, Taiwan, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Macau. You went to Hong Kong and where else? Macau, China, Taiwan, and Indonesia. How long were you in China? I'm probably uh, approximately four or five months. Okay. When you were in China or one of the other Asian countries, your apartment was broken into. Is that right? Yeah. By not the, broken into. They have a search warrant. They have a search warrant. Yes. You came in. And, and they took all your papers. I believe so. Okay. When was that? I don't know. You don't know what month? No, I don't know. Why wouldn't you know what month? I don't understand. When nobody someone, informed. When, you mean nobody informed. You, you, there was no one in your house? No. My apartment normally is empty. So it was totally empty? I believe so. But it had all your papers? Yes, I believe so. Well, how can it be empty and, and have papers? I, maybe I'm confusing you. I, I think it, it, it's a gentleman yield. I think down in his office in Little Rock, he had a secretary, and maybe you're talking about that. Well, I'm just trying no, to no, understand. No. I just want to know when your papers were taken. Mm, I think FBI have the record because I don't know the date. Uh, isn't it a fact that the search warrant was October 1997? I don't know. Well, it was. So your, your income tax statement for 1996 was due when, Mr. Tree? Mm, some, I think it's April. April 15th, right. what year? 1997. Right, so you can't give us an excuse mm -hmm. that the government had your papers because they didn't take it by the time you were required to file it. Isn't that true? Oh, in that case, yes, it would be true. So, if they come in October so, of 1997. So I am so asking you the question, why didn't you file your 1996 tax statement? Because of my tax statement, normally it's my wife file. So it's not now, you're changing your story, it's not now that the IRS had your papers. See, when you start telling lies, you get caught. When you start inventing things, you get caught, and it just gets messy. You basically told me something that wasn't true. You told me you didn't file your statement because the IRS had your, the government had your papers. And the actual fact, the 96 statement was due in April, and that, they didn't have your papers then. In my knowledge, I don't know when they search a warrant, come to my house. I'll come back. Mr. Chairman, I'll give him a chance to answer other questions. Uh, Mr. Barr, did you have questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, might I inquire uh, for the record the various exhibits, including those um, that I've referred to during my previous uh, round questioning of Mr. Tree, uh, exhibits uh, 52 uh, at seek, 51 at seek. Those will be in the record. I don't have to move their specific admission. Mr. Barr, you only want to submit questions for the record at this point? No, the exhibits. Oh, the exhibits without objection. Okay, the, 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 all, the, all the exhibits that, uh, that we refer to will, will be a part of the record. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tree, are you familiar with a company called United Biotech? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, this is, in fact, a corporation that you incorporated in 1992, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, is it also correct that you listed United Biotech's address uh, at number six, Alice Court, a home that you owned in the uh, Broadmoor area? I couldn't recall where the address is. I don't recall the address. Okay. Uh, 
the address that you used also, though, as the incorporator uh, for United Biotech was a false address. Is that correct? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand. Okay. Can we know the your, number? Your, your address, uh -huh. which you listed as the incorporator, was 5602 West 12th Street. Can I look at the record? I, I couldn't remember that, that time. Oh, you can, look, the, the you can look whatever number. records. I mean, all I'm saying is the, the address, this is your corporation. Yes. The address that was listed, that you listed as the incorporator, uh -huh. was 5602 West 12th Street. Can I look at the paper? I mean, that's a long time ago. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is that the address was listed as 5602 West 12th Street, which was an address that did not exist. The people that reside in that neighborhood have never heard of United Biotech. What was the business in which Bio United Biotech was involved? Oh, uh, which is uh, one biotech company in China, uh, northern China called Changchun City. I sold uh, some equipment, uh, ferment, fermental, right? uh, fermental uh, equipment to them. And uh, the director of the institute uh, wanted to, he wanted me to buy, a, if I can buy some more for him. I remember the case was uh, uh, try to buy the medicines bottle clear bottle. So we uh, formed a corporation joint venture uh, in Little Rock. To do what? To sell the medical, uh, like uh, in the time we was talking about the, by the bottle, shot, you know, for the shot. Some of the equipment that United Biotech uh, was formed to sell were what are called Dual use biofermenters, correct? Not a, not a, that's a, I, I believe it's Daihatsu sell that. What? That's a Daihatsu, my company sell the fermental. I, I don't understand what you're saying. This one is after, this uh, United Biotech is uh, after I sold the fermental. We after, formed after, the, you, after you sold the fermenter? Yes, we formed this company. So the sale of the biofermenter was before 1992? I, I think so, yes. Was it? A, yes, I, I believe so. Okay. Because I clearly understand we opened this bio, United Biotech. It's after uh, he already sold the machinery to him. He wanted to do more bottle. What does it mean to say that something is a dual use piece of equipment? Oh, I don't, I, I don't, in that time, I don't know. I just know the biotech, uh, the, the fermental. But you do know that dual use means that the piece of equipment can be used both for civilian purposes as well as weapons related or military. I do military. not know that in that time. Excuse me, I just need to, uh, to point out to the gentleman's time is up and uh, say Mr. Scarborough has the floor. Um, I yield uh, my time to Mr. Barr. I thank the gentleman from Florida. Uh, the fact of the matter is that a dual-use biofermenter is dual-use because it can, in fact, be used for weapons-related purposes. That is a fact. And the weapons-related purpose is production of bacteria. That is a fact. Now, you can sit here all day as you do in, the, in all of these lines of questioning and profess ignorance. I don't buy it any more than Mr. Shays buys it. You were in the business of selling or attempting to sell biofermenters that have a known military weapons use. I know now. After you tell before today, I don't even know that will be used both in. 
So it's your testimony under oath today that the first you've ever heard of this is when I just posed these questions to you? What do you mean this? Is, is it your testimony that the first you have heard today, today is of this matter of dual-use biofermenters, which you were attempting to sell in China, was today, during my questioning, you, you had never I, heard I this? I did before? sell this uh, fermenter in 19, I think, uh, either 1991 or 90, early 90. But today, I never know this field. I just sell the machinery. That's, what, they what request did, me the re re machinery. What did you, what did you, uh, maybe you could tell us what you thought you were selling. It's a you think you fermental. Were selling automobiles? No, it's a fermental for the uh, biotech use. I don't, I'm not in the biotech field. He just gave me the spit, everything, what he wants. Who is, who is he? Mr. Zhang, the director of the Changchun Biotech Institute. I thought it was used for medicine. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, uh, submit uh, uh, for the record a letter dated February 28th of this year uh, from uh, Kenneth Alabeck to Caroline Katzen uh, of this committee uh, regarding the bio use or dual use uh, for the fermenters, indicating that in the expert opinion of Mr. Alabeck, Alabeck uh, these fermenters uh, do have weapons related use for the production of bacteriological uh, weapons. Uh, without objection, so ordered. I, I notice that the, uh, we're not represented on the Democrat side of the aisle, but I, I make an assumption there'd be no objection. Okay, thank you. Would you please uh, tell the committee uh, who is Dr. Zhang Zheming? He's Jiming? the director of the Institute of Chinese Biotech Institute. Is that the uh, official Chinese uh, government ministry of public health, biological research institute? I believe so. I only know the Chinese words. Okay. Uh, when did you first meet him? Uh, somewhere late in 1990. 1990? Yes. Okay. And did Dr. or did Peter Fu introduce you? No. Who did? Uh, the name is uh, Mr. Xu Qing. He's the uh, city government of the Changchun City. But who is Peter Fu? Uh, Peter Fu is uh, my friend in Little Rock. Okay. And it's never been your testimony or statement that Peter Fu introduced you to Dr. Zhang? No. What is the relationship between Mr. Fu and Dr. Zhang? Oh, just because I invite Dr. Chen come to U.S. to so we can form the United Biotech. Try to I try to sell some bottle for him, and uh, uh, Peter Fu is my real close friend. So I introduce to them because some of the uh, technical words I might don't understand. Sometimes I ask him to translate for me. And Dr. Zhang worked at the Changsheng Biological Products Institute, is that correct? Correct. And what does that institute do? Uh, some uh, shots for, like, a, for I know it's a, hold on. May I repeat the translator, Mr. Barr, what he told Mr. Tree? Certainly. Serum and oral vaccines. Okay. And is that Mr. Tree's testimony? Um, yes. Well, he can adopt, uh, you can adopt that as your testimony, that that is your answer? Yes. Okay. Uh, is the, uh, the time up? Do I need to? Um, I do. Excuse me. Uh, your time is up, and I have the time. I'm happy to yield the time to you. Okay, thank minutes. you. Uh, Dr. Zhang is uh, 
does hold a political position in China, does he not? I only know, in the time, I only know he's the director of the institute. But he, uh, he is a deputy to the National People's Congress. That's not a uh, question, that's a statement. He, he is a deputy to the oh, National okay, People's okay. Congress. Have you ever visited the Changchun Biological Products Institute? Yes, I, I did. Uh, when did you visit? When we talk about uh, 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 this uh, uh, fermental, I went to uh, look at the, uh, what's the institute. When? Oh, uh, I think uh, late 1990 or early 1991. <clears throat> and this was uh, as part of your effort to sell a fermenting machine to the institute, correct? Correct. And that machine was actually sold in 1993, is that correct? I don't have a record, but I did sell to them. Well, the fermenter was sold to them in 1993, isn't that correct? I couldn't recall the date. Or 90, actually, no, maybe earlier. November 1992, it was yeah. sold. Yes. And delivered in July of 1993. I don't know when they delivered it, because I don't. But it was sold, you sold it to them in, in yeah, late 92? Yes. 92. yes. And why was it necessary for you to be involved in this if you don't have any particular background as you've testified in bio-fermenting machines? He just want to buy, I'm the, many, in the early 90s, hardly people going to northeast China. And I was trying to do my wretched in that country, uh, in that city. <clears throat> and, uh, so I know some people. So people introduce me, say, you sense you from U.S. In that time, it's not many people come to U.S. as I uh, think, you know, in especially in the Northeast Arkansas, I mean, not Arkansas, uh, China. So they say, you know, would you help us to locate those products? And I think I want to make money. So I was having a trading company. How much did your company make off of the sale? I cannot recall. I think, uh, I sold them, I think, two, and I think maybe somewhere around 15,000 each. I, I'm not sure now. Approximately. I really don't remember. Maybe 15,000 each. 15,000? Yes. yes. The bio-fermenter was uh, produced by the Sulzer Company, is that correct? Yes. And where was it manufactured? I think it's in Switzerland. Was it shipped to China directly from Switzerland or through the United States? I don't have no, because uh, I didn't do, don't know where it's shipping. You have a copy of your documentation from the Commerce Department regarding this sale? No. Can you produce that? Oh, oh, say again? Can you produce the documents? I, I don't have the document. What you, what you, what your question is? Well, what, what we have here is a piece of machinery that can be used to produce biological weapons. Mm -hmm. That is a military use that is regulated I, I, by I, federal I, law. As far as I'm concerned, in that time, I do business, I'm the broker. Oh, I just tell, put them two people together, sign the deal. I don't know how they send a ship to China. I don't know. Well, the fact of the matter is, this is a piece of machinery with very serious military consequences. It can be used, used to produce biological weapons. You were serving as a broker mm -hmm. for the sale of this piece of dual-use machinery with very serious national security consequences regulated by U.S. law, which regulates its export or its sale. And you're saying you didn't have to go through any procedures in order to secure proper documentation or approval from the US I government. didn't go through this. 
because it's a sister's uh, job. I, my job is uh, find the buyer and find the seller. As long as they are great, oh, I take the commission. I didn't produce the machine. I don't have to export the machine. I didn't do the export machine. And uh, where they come from, I don't even know. You care? The gentleman's time has expired, and I think you have the next time, Mr. Barr, so you recognize you. for five more minutes. Do you care? I don't even know what's that. I don't even, I, until do today, any, I know it's a dual machine. Do you have any concern? I think it's for medicine in that time. If people do medicine to help people, I never think that's a wrong thing to do. And I'm just a broker. Somebody want to buy something, I try to sell. So it doesn't concern you at all that this piece of machinery is now in the hands of the Chinese government. To helping people, I don't have a little concern and on that part. But I don't know the... May, may be being used to produce biological weapons. I do not know if it will be... Does that concern you that that, is, that that may be happening? Right now? Right now. That's 10 years ago, the business is over. If it happens, something happens. I just sell the machine. It, what they do, I don't know. You know, we, we well, heard, well, we heard, well, we heard these defenses in Nuremberg, no, uh, the, too. The, 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 the feel I have, I do not know what they're going to do. But I know only thing they want to do is for the... They don't buy from me. They won't buy from somebody else. They're going to get it. What they're going to use for, I really don't have a control. I don't know. So in your view, we shouldn't have any export controls at all because they'll get it from somewhere else anyway. I thought they was making medicine. If they, uh, if I thought they was produce the poison uh, thing for people, I would not uh, agree and I would not do it. Is that you or your attorney saying that? Because that isn't what you said just a few minutes ago until your attorney whispered it in your ear. Yeah, he told me that, and I agree. He's a very smart attorney, I guess. This, this really, it, I mean, this is amazing. You're, you're, you're saying people were bringing money to you to make donations. People were coming to you to ask you to get them on DNC committees. People were coming to you and asking to broker the sale of sophisticated machinery. And... It's like you're walking around in a daze. You're wearing blinders, you have earplugs, you have tape over your mouth, you have gloves on your hands so that there's no fingerprints, you, know, you, know, you have no idea what's going on. This was a piece of machinery that is very clearly one with military applications. It's not a secret, it is a well-known piece of machinery. And you have us believe that you not weren't until even concerned today. about it until your attorney tells you you were concerned about it. Not until today. I don't know. I don't know what that machine... I, oh, I know that machine will help. Oh, I know that machine is uh, used for fermenting for the uh, pharmaceutical product. Well, just n not that you're concerned about it, but I will have a copy of this letter uh, delivered to your table. Uh, this is the letter that I've already had introduced into the record, which says very clearly that this is a piece of machinery uh, that has weapons that can be used for weapons-related production of bacteria. And, uh, okay. I think, I think, I think, I think it's, uh, it's a shame that you were, you were engaged in this and at best had no interest in what was going on here. I, as Mr. Shea said, I, I don't think you're a stupid man, Mr. Trey. I think you're very bright and I think you know an awful lot more than you're letting on today. And I think you knew an awful lot more about what you were doing in these transactions than you're letting on today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, can we have a break?
Uh, the gentleman yields back the balance of his time. Uh, you need a five minute break? Please. Uh, we'll recess for five minutes and uh, hope we can get back promptly. Coming up, more from today's hearing on Democratic fundraising activities with testimony 